All righty, so we'll go ahead and get started. So hello everyone, my name is Matt Point and I am the Director of Advancement here at Children with Diabetes. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Tonight I have with me Ken Rodenheiser. Hi Ken. Um, hello, Matt. Ken is a good friend of mine. He's also on our board of directors here at Children with Diabetes. Ken is also a CDCES, so a Certified Diabetes Care and Education Specialist. And um, he's a certified running coach and has lived with diabetes since he was a kid. So if there's anybody who's gonna talk to us about diabetes and exercise, Ken is definitely the one. Um, I wanna say thanks for, to everybody for joining us tonight. Um, Ken's gonna do a quick presentation and then we're gonna open it up for some Q&A at the end. Um, or if you have any questions throughout the conversation, please feel free to pop them in the chat. You can put them in the Q&A box. If you'd like to ask a question anon anonymously, you can do that by choosing host from the um, from the drop down in the chat and sending it to me and I will ask it to Ken for you at the end. But thanks again for joining us. And if you have any questions, let us know. Ken, thanks, Matt. take it away. And I uh, I feel like you're using Ken a lot and I know you as Kenny, it's my alter ego. So I'll have to, you know, change the way I have it on here because it says Kenny. Um, but as Matt said, my name's Kenny Rodenheiser. Um, I have been living with diabetes for 18 long years, and I love to be active, love to do anything that gets me and my body moving. Um, so, and as he said as well, feel free just to put some questions in there and we can make this as open as possible. And I wanna be able to help you. Um, so the theme of today's presentation is having confidence in your exercise and taking that next step and jumping into a different type of exercise, or maybe you're new to exercise altogether. Um, again, just kind of getting in there and doing it. So new dad, I always like to put my dad jokes in there. Um, exercise, I thought you said extra fries, right? Like who wants to go out and run when we can have extra fries? Haha, <laughs> I know it's silly, but that's me, I like it. Um, so what we're gonna talk about today, the importance of activity in general, how you can get yourself started, um, and just get your motivation going and maintain that motivation. And then of course, we're gonna talk about diabetes and managing blood sugars when you're new to an activity. So um, this presentation I actually did in the spring Friends for Life, the refuel. And I wanted to do it again because we didn't have um, as many people join my presentation because it was paired up against Mike Riddell, who was just, is an amazing um, exercise physiologist from Toronto. And I mean, if it's up to seeing me or him, I would see him as well. So I wanted to give, have the opportunity to present this again. So just thinking through what your type of experience is with activity. You don't have to put this in the chat, but just thinking through what's applicable to you and what describes you best. So the importance of being active. There are both immediate and long-term benefits from being active. And the number one most beneficial, immediate um, benefit from being active is just the mental health benefits. So specifically for pediatrics and kids, it improves their cognitive function. When they are able to blow off some steam, they're able to then focus in the classroom more, which is extremely helpful, not only for their physical health, but for their mental health as well, and for their education and learning. Um, for the rest of us, it can help a little bit with that as we're blowing off steam, but also it can help with depression and anxiety, which is so important in just everything that's happening in the world and the stress that builds up. And we need to have some of that just release of that stress. Um, physical health, obviously you're gonna have physical health benefits when you're active because you're just improving all different types of your body, um, your heart, your lungs, your muscles, all different types, again, are just being improved. And then the way your body metabolizes food and the way your body metabolizes insulin for those of us with diabetes, exercise helps with that immediately. It helps us break down that insulin faster and more effective so that we can not see possibly as much of a postprandial spike. Our blood sugar doesn't rise as much after a meal. Super duper important. And then the long-term benefits, we can actually live longer. If we put a little bit of work in now, we can live longer. So 
Um, research shows that with 150 minutes of activity in a week, that can actually decrease mortality um, from all causes, not just diabetes or cardiac, all causes by 33%. So putting a little bit of work in now, 150 minutes a week is five days of 30 minutes of activity, and you can decrease mortality by 33%. For me, that's worth it. I want to be here for a long time, as long as I possibly can. Um, so again, making sure I put the work in now. And then as we get older, um, we run the risk of having falls. And if we fall, that can be really debilitating to our health and that can be very, very dangerous. So as we are doing different types of activity, we can grow our muscles and they can count or protect our bones from when we fall so that we have this little extra cushion around there. Um, if we're doing some type of flexibility stretch yoga, um, we can work on how we can bend over and pick something up so that we're not running the risk of falling as we're trying to grab things. And then balance, we can have some improvement from balance as well. Again, all of those things really help as we age and run the risk of having falls. There is a lot of things that you need to think of before being active um, and just making sure that we're not going zero to 60 because we can run the risk of injuring ourselves and we just don't wanna see that happen. Um, so first and foremost is just consult your healthcare team. If you're starting something new or if you're worried about the type of activity that you're gonna participate in, talk to them first, have an open conversation with your doctor and say, or your nurse practitioner and say, you know, I'm thinking about doing this and I wanna be as safe as possible. Maybe it's related to diabetes, but maybe it isn't. You wanna make sure you're safe um, when talking to your, to your healthcare team or when you're starting an activity. Um, and Matt, I'm gonna pause real quick because so, I do see that someone raised their hand. So was there a question on the last slide that I need to go back to? I don't have access to the chat right now, I apologize. If you have questions, you could pop them into the chat and I will ask any for you. Okay, perfect, thanks. Um, so I'll just go back through here. Um, and if one pops up, Matt, just interrupt me. Um, next is going to be knowing your limits. So we all wanna push ourselves to do better. This is with activity, but also not with activity. We just wanna be better um, as human beings. So knowing your limits, but also knowing when you can go above your limits too, because we want to constantly raise that ceiling and just push ourselves to be better, but we don't want to go so hard to the point where we injure ourselves. Um, and then prepare for the activity. So let's pretend we're going to be starting um, a weightlifting routine and we are brand new to weights. I've never picked up a weight in our lives because they're intimidating. And quite frankly, for me personally, you know, I, I prefer doing cardio, weightlifting, I, I steer away from, if I'm going to go start lifting some weights, I need to know what the activity is that I'm doing, what the different um, lifts that I'm doing so that I can look up how to properly do them because form is so important. A lot of times when I was in high school, it was about who can put the most weight on and get it up, but you could injure yourself because your form takes a hit when you're increasing the weight. So making sure that our form is proper, not just in weightlifting, but in everything that we do so that we can be safe with our activity and then start slow. Again, that same analogy when I was in high school, you don't put all the weight you can and try to just bench press everything that you can. You wanna start slow and build up that muscle and build the muscle memory so that your body is ready for that. You can't just start right at the top. You gotta to earn your way to that place. And then understand the equipment and form. I just did that one too. Um, and then I also want to focus on how activity and um, exercise should not be all about weight management and body image. So I just want to take a pause real quick and talk about that because um, all bodies move, right? It doesn't matter if you are one weight or another weight, all bodies move and exercise is beneficial to everybody. If you look on a scale and are discouraged and stop your activity, you lose so many benefits from that activity um, just because of what the number says on the scale. And that is so heartbreaking to me because it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what that number says. You're going to get benefits from the activity. And we shouldn't be just focused on 
those numbers or what we see in the mirror because um, we're all different and that's okay. So I, I really wanna make sure that is known. Um, how and where to begin? This picture on the right-hand side just speaks so, so much to me and the importance of taking those small steps. We have this, I sometimes have an accountability mirror. Um, I heard it in a podcast once and I absolutely loved it. So I put on a post-it note and I stick it on my mirror. So every day um, I wanna reach that goal, I have it on my mirror and I look at it. But if that's a long-term goal, that can't be the only achievement that we wanna make. We don't wanna have just a long-term goal that we're looking at that it just feels like it's getting further and further and further in the distance. We need to make small achievable goals that reach up to it. And that's what that ladder picture shows. Little steps along the way brings us progress more than taking one big leap and another big leap. We have to continuously motivate ourselves and, and that's it. If we keep making achievable goals and we keep reaching these goals, we're gonna feel good about reaching those goals and set another goal. Maybe we'll set the next one higher, but if there's another ladder step midway through that helps us get to that next one, it's gonna be a lot more. So especially for those thinking about starting a new activity, this is really important. If you are going from that couch to 5K, that trademark um, company app that teaches you how to go from not doing any sort of running or movement to being able to do a 5K, um, you're gonna notice that you don't just go out there and start running, right? You're not gonna go from the couch and start running a 5K. You're gonna get out there and walk. Maybe you walk for 10 minutes, maybe you walk for five minutes and that's gonna be the first day. And then we're gonna keep building and building and building on that. But eventually, again, as this picture shows, those little steps are gonna help us along the way to reach what our goal is, to reach that accountability mirror, what I'm sticking up there, what I would like to do long-term. Second bullet here, is doing something you like. I, again, I said, I don't like lifting weights. I prefer running. I became a run coach because I love running and that makes me happy. I'm going to continue doing it because it makes me happy. Other people look at me and they say, you like to run? I say, yeah, look at that picture behind me. My wife and I, we're so happy, but that's me. And I have the things that I like and you have the things that you like. So find something that you enjoy doing so that you stick with it. Um, I used to talk with kids all the time who we were trying to get them to exercise a little bit more. And I would tell them, do whatever makes you happy and do whatever makes you sweaty, because that movement that we have really, really just makes the difference. And it can get us into a, a groove of an activity. And if we're smiling throughout the whole thing, then it's not a chore. It's something that we love. Journaling your entries. And this is really important, too, um, because you can see your progress. When it comes to diabetes, a lot of things that we do, we have to record along the way so that we can make changes. And even if you don't have diabetes, you can record and see what your progress is. Sometimes we see and feel that first start of activity, but then we plateau, or at least we think we plateau because we don't know or realize what that progress is. But if we're journaling our entries, we can go back and say, you know, in the weight room, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize I put 10 extra pounds up that I didn't think I was doing, or I didn't realize with my run, my pace was faster, my distance was longer, and it was easier. So some of these apps that you can track runs with, at least again, that's what my specialty is right now, um, you can track how you're feeling too. So at the end of that run, how did you feel? At the end of that bike ride, how did you feel? Was it easy for you? Was it hard for you? Um, and that's helpful because along the way, if you look back, you can say, wow, maybe I did the same pace and the same distance, but I was dying a month ago. And now I've said I felt pretty good after it, which is really, really important. Um, give yourself grace when you do not reach your goal. So this is important because sometimes we fail just as humans. That's not with diabetes. That's not with activity. That's just being human beings. Sometimes we just don't get it right. And that's okay. Because in order to succeed, Sometimes we have to have a little bit of failures. So give yourself some grace. Don't quit the activity because you failed. Maybe you didn't complete that 5K that you were looking to do. That's all right. There's always next time. There's another 5K out there. It's not the only chance. Um, personally, right? So I said that I like to run. I also like to bike and I'm starting to get into swimming. So I wanted to do 
a long distance triathlon. So two years ago, I'm sorry, one year ago, I was supposed to do um, an Ironman in Atlantic City. Then COVID hit and it got canceled. Um, my daughter was born and I wasn't training, so I had to defer it. And it was really, really hard. So I wanted to complete this triathlon, but I wasn't able to because I wasn't training because I prioritized my family. That's all right. There's going to be another race that I can do and I have to live with that, but it doesn't mean I'm going to give up. I'm going to just work that much harder over the next year to make sure that I am ready for this um, next Ironman 70.3, whenever it is. And then, as I said in the last slide, knowing what your limits are. We want to make sure that we're not injuring ourselves and getting hurt. If I went out there and did that Ironman race, I would be probably floating somewhere in the water because I wasn't prepared for it. And we need to make sure that we recognize that and just don't injure ourselves. Um, one thing that, again, I heard on a different podcast, I think my wife actually told me this, is the seven minute rule. And the seven minute rule is getting yourself to do something for seven minutes, whether it is taking a walk around, a bike ride, a, um, a run, going to the gym and lifting weights or going to a class, stick with it for seven minutes and tell yourself, if I don't wanna keep doing it after the seven minutes, I won't do it anymore. That's okay. But the hardest thing is just to get started. So if you tell yourself in seven minutes, I can quit if I want to, by the time that seven minutes comes, you probably won't even realize it unless you have an alarm on your phone or watch because you're gonna be so into what you're doing that you forget about it. Remember, activity gives us releases endorphins. Endorphins make us happy. We're gonna forget about wanting to sit back there down on the couch. But if we can do it, stick it out for seven minutes, then, and we still don't wanna do it, give yourself that out. But if you're trying to get into the activity rather than talking yourself from getting started at all, because seven minutes is still gonna benefit you, even if that's all you do in that day, um, just give yourself that little rule that's helpful to get started. All right, and I'm gonna put a shameless plug in here for Team CWD. So I am currently leading Team CWD and this is um, an online way for us to stay connected about our activity or even an in-person, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, and just children with diabetes way to promote activity. So I'll put a shameless plug in a second. Staying motivated, have a team, have a buddy to have your back. So it, you don't have to do this all by yourself. Um, if you want to, that's fine. But if you're having that difficulty keeping on track, find someone like, hey, do you want to do this 5K with me? Or hey, do you want to go for a bike ride? Because if you're me, it's easier to say no to myself. Like, ah, oh, I'm not going to do it today. But if someone else has signed up with me, I'm like, all right, I have to do it because I, I'm doing it for them. Not even for me, I'm doing it for them. So have someone to help keep you, um, to make sure that you hold yourself accountable. Find a community, whether it's a Facebook group and you want to join the Team CWD Facebook group, or if it's something more local and you need that local connection that has people right there with you saying, hey, do you want to go for a walk today around the block? Find that community so that you can have somebody with you. And then this is the most important thing for me personally. I need to sign up for event an event to stay motivated. Um, so if you look behind me, my wife and I, we share this. This is all of our medals. Personally, if I don't sign up for a race, I have nothing to train for in my mind. And therefore I fall off the wagon and I don't train. So we sign up for these races in order to keep ourselves motivated um, and making sure that we have that long distance goal so that along the way we have those short goals that allow us to um, just keep going and keep going and keep going. That accountability mirror that I said before, these are this is what my long-term goal is. So you better believe what's gonna be posted on my mirror next is gonna be that Ironman triathlon so that I don't fall off again and I keep running and I keep biking and I start swimming that more and learn how to swim appropriately um, because that's a goal and it's something that I want. So specifically with Team CWD, again, our theme and what we want to do is just motivate you to be active in whatever that means to you. It doesn't have to be going out there and running an Ironman. It doesn't have, mean having to go out there and run a marathon. It doesn't mean having to go out there and run or do any cardio whatsoever. If you want to walk, if you want to play soccer, if you want to play basketball or football, or if you want to just dance your heart away, go do it. 
what makes you happy, what makes you smile, and what makes you sweaty is the best activity. So specifically for Team CWD, we've been trying to do some challenges along the way. Um, earlier in the year, in January, is where we had our um, big online virtual one because the world was still in lockdown and we really just didn't have that sense of community. So I did a challenge that it was just do whatever you can, right? That whole theme of do what makes you smile, do what makes you happy. So do what you can and post about it in our Team CWD um, Facebook group. And you wouldn't believe the different people who joined, some of which had no connection with children with diabetes, but it was just a way for them to have that sense of community. And that made my heart warm because, right, we're helping people with diabetes and we know that, but now we had this outreach that we could help other people and help promote our mission, or at least Team CWD's mission of just a healthier lifestyle in terms of activity. So um, that was this past January and it was just so wonderful seeing everybody post and show what they're doing. Some people went for runs, some people went for hikes, some people went for rollerblading and skating. And it was just awesome. It was so awesome to see um, people posting their pictures. And I like to see that continue throughout the year, um, but we didn't have the same, um, I guess we'll call it accountability, right? Because it was a month challenge that we did. It wasn't throughout the whole year. So I would love to see that come back and see everybody motivate each other again. Um, but I think that's just something that we'll have to keep working on together as a, as a team. Um, in person, this January coming up um, is the Run Disney 2022 marathon weekend. So in years past, the leaders and the staff of children with diabetes have a lot of whom participated in the 10K, some with the 5K, some with the half marathon, some with the full um, a couple crazies and myself, we did all four of those races in a weekend. Um, but we've done that as a form to fundraise for children with diabetes. And two years ago, um, I wasn't able to participate, but I was able to go last minute. So I created a cheer squad, cheer section, um, where we had a designated spot in the Disney Boardwalk Hotel, um, just the boardwalk. And we got to cheer on all of our teammates and everyone running the race as they ran by. Um, and honestly, I don't know if I had more fun cheering or if I had more fun running in the past because I love both of them. Um, but we're going to be participating again in run Disney 2022. Um, I believe the races are sold out. So if you're going and you're not part of children team CWD, let us know. You can join the team. That'd be amazing. Um, we'd love to still cheer for you and just be able to meet you as well. Um, for those who can't go because you don't want to go to Disney in January because you just can't make that happen or you just don't want to go. Um, we are going to announce um, a participate from home option so that you can have that same sense of community, that same thing that we had back in this past January. We're going to have that something similar um, coming up. So there will be an announcement. You can sign up on Team CWD and register for the team so that you can get this announcement too. But it's, it's going to be fun. And like I said, we're here in this together and we can help each other along the way. I'm gonna pause, Matt, are we still doing okay with the chat? We are doing well. Does anybody have any questions right now before Kenny moves into the next section? All right. Don't worry, at the end, we will be sharing information about how you can sign up for more information about Team CWD events and programs. So um, if that's your question, we will have that up at the end <laughs> for you. Perfect. And I'll have another Team CWD shameless plug, don't worry. Um, so of course, children with diabetes, diabetes, we have to talk about blood sugars and how to manage blood sugar. Um, so this screen right here, and there'll be more popping up. So if you wanna take a screenshot, feel free to. If you wanna watch this again later, feel free to. Um, we just have to think about our body and learn about our body. So the most important thing is when was the last time that you took insulin? Insulin has a three to four, possibly even five or six um, hour action time. And that's going to work in our body the whole time. When we are active, our body breaks down the insulin more efficiently. And so the same amount of insulin does more to our blood sugar. And we have to think about 
that last time we took insulin, it also can work a little bit faster too. So timing, timing, timing is key. When was the last time you ate? And then put it on here, but also what did you eat? Because a similar thing, that food lasts in our body for a certain amount of time. And depending on the type of food, is it high glycemic index, meaning it goes into our body really quickly? Or is it low glycemic index, meaning that it absorbs very slowly? What type of food is it? And will it sustain me and my blood sugar throughout that activity? Um, pause right here. I know I said we're talking about diabetes, but also as an athlete, you have to fuel yourself with the activity. If you're not eating before you're running um, or before you're doing something of a long duration activity, that's not going to be safe for your body with diabetes, but also without diabetes, because you have to fuel yourself as a human to get through that. So really quick plug in there for that. Um, what type of activity will you be doing? Because different types of activity may affect us differently. And then how does your blood sugars respond to this activity? Or if you've never done it before, how will they respond? How do you think they'll respond? Think about that scientific method. We have to make a hypothesis of how we're going to, um, how our body and blood sugar is going to respond. But then we also have to go back and assess how that worked. And then we can change what our hypothesis was. So the last time you took insulin and the last time you ate, the reason we do this is to make sure that we can prevent lows during the activity because we can be active with high blood sugars, right? We can be active with 180, 200, 300, 400, 500 blood sugars. It doesn't matter what the blood sugar is. We can still be active. What the dangerous part is, is when we have ketones. And I'll go over that again in just a second. Um, but the reason we want to know when the last time we ate and took insulin is specifically for activity is to prevent lows. Um, we have to know what type of activity we're going to be doing. Because as I said, different activities, we have different responses. Um, and even the same type of activity, but we're going from practice to a game, we're going to have different responses just because of the nature of our competitiveness. If I'm training for my whatever 5k, 10k, and I'm just running around the neighborhood compared to the actual race day where I'm getting butterflies in my stomach, I'm getting excited and nervous and anxious. Um, my body's going to respond differently because there's just different hormones being released in. Um, and then how will your blood sugars respond to the different activity? We're going to go over some things today, but everybody responds a little bit differently. So again, you have to learn what your body is going to do with that activity and what happens with your body so that we can make the best plan for you. And then really, really important. We always have to know what our blood sugar is before before we start the activity in order that for us to be safe. Um, and, you know, Anthony, can you repeat that last line? You broke up a tiny bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the last like bottom part. Yeah. Just the last thing you said. Okay. Um, just that everybody responds differently to the activity and um, we have to figure out what works best for your body and how you respond to the activity. So we can make a specific plan for you. And then what I was saying here was, I'm not sure if you caught this and I'm repeating myself, but um, it's important to always know what the blood sugar is before the activity and before we're running around and being active so that we can be safe. Um, for those who are using continuous glucose monitors, that's really easy because you can pop down, look down and see what the blood sugar is without having to do anything. Um, and continuous glucose monitoring also makes it easier to know what the blood sugar is throughout the activity so we can make changes later but for those who are new to the activity and for those who don't have continuous glucose monitors, you have to do a finger stick before the activity. And I would really encourage you, depending on the type, if you're doing high intensity activity, maybe even once every half hour um, or more frequent to find out how your body responds so you can make a plan. Um, but if you're not on CGMs, just talking to your doctor about that so that you can have all the information possible to make the best decision possible. Really, really important. Um, and I'm just gonna go back here. Um, so preventing lows throughout the activity. Let's talk about what we can do to prevent lows throughout the activity. Um, number one, and this is hard to do, especially for kids, but going into the activity with no insulin on board or very low insulin on board. That means that you're letting all that fast acting bolus insulin wear out from your body before we start the activity. That way we don't have to have that potential 
dropping low because the insulin is still working and potentially faster than it normally does. Um, so we are going to know what the insulin on board is or go in without insulin on board and then possibly have a snack beforehand, right? So if we want to have 30 minutes of activity, maybe we start with having 15 carbs every 30 minutes of activity. And then if we notice that our, our blood sugar always spikes high after we have 15 carbs for 30 minutes, do 10 carbs for 30 minutes and then five carbs for 30 minutes or three carbs for 30 minutes. Maybe we learn that your body and your, um, or your body's response to that activity is it actually goes up and we don't need any carbs before the activity. That's something that we learn, but we always want to prevent the low so that we don't have to stop the activity because I mean, that's an easy way to stop an activity, but we don't want to get dressed up and go start doing something for nothing. We want to prevent that low blood sugar. And also it's going to be safer not to have low blood sugars. Um, if you are doing a short but intense activity, having something that's a little bit faster absorbed is going to be better. Um, longer duration activities, we're going to need to snack along the way. And I would definitely work with your healthcare team about what to do for that. Um, just a little tip of what I do is I try to go every couple of miles having um, 15 carbs. So maybe one day I do it every um, one mile, every two miles. Um, but I see what my body's response is. I look at my CGM and I see what my training pattern has been too. So in the past, I've done nuts. In the past, I've done uh, granola bars or chewy bars or cliff bars or um, little tiny bursts of Gatorade chews or cliff chews along the way. Um, but it depends on where I'm at in my training too. And we'll talk about that too in just a little bit. Um, the other thing that we can potentially do to prevent lows before activity is to have less insulin. So, you know, what makes our blood sugar go up and that's going to be carbohydrates. That's going to be lack of insulin. If we want our blood sugar to go up, we can potentially give less insulin for a meal. So if you're eating right before an activity or maybe a half hour before the, an activity, don't give yourself the full mealtime dose because then you're going to be fighting that insulin with more carbs throughout the activity. And some people, you know, if they are trying to get more in shape and they're like, oh, well, I want to be active, but I have to feed myself constantly. And I feel like I'm a hamster on a wheel. Then rather than eating the carbs to bring your blood sugar up, you can take less insulin. If you're on an insulin pump, we can actually suspend our basal for about one to two hours before the activity. So as we're going into the activity, our insulin on board is lower and our blood sugar can start to go up, protecting us throughout that activity. Different people respond differently, different activities, you have different responses. So if your blood sugar rises through the activity because you have a lot of adrenaline pumping because you're a competitive person, you probably shouldn't be cutting back your basal or having fast active carbs or fast acting carbs right before we start the activity because your blood sugar is already going up because your adrenaline's going up. Um, but maybe you need the carbs at the end of the activity because what goes up must come down. The way adrenaline works is that it stimulates your liver to release extra glucose into your blood. And when your liver releases extra glucose into your blood, your blood sugar goes up. Duh. Later, when the activity is done and you just like, Oh, I'm finally done. Your liver's like, hey, remember all that sugar that I gave you? Well, I need it back now. And your blood sugar will naturally go down without insulin. And this is a potential cause for delayed lows. So if you're finding it, your blood sugar goes low one, two, three, four hours after an activity, that means maybe you need less carbs up front and then maybe more later because your liver is taking back the glucose that it once lent out to the blood because in a person without diabetes, that's what happens to give you that extra burst of energy. Your liver releases sugar into the blood, but your pancreas releases insulin immediately. So the insulin just grabs it and brings it to the muscle to use for energy. But that's not happening with us people with diabetes because we have insulin that we tell based off what we can predict. And we just can't always predict adrenaline that consistently. Also, different types of activity strength training and resistance training, resistance workouts, those tell, like when you give that little extra oomph, those tell your liver to possibly release a little bit extra insulin or extra, I'm sorry, glucose. So those could actually cause your blood sugar to go up just from that type of activity, whereas cardio or something else that you're doing causes the blood sugar to go down. 
I would always recommend to anticipate and predict that your blood sugar is going to go low for safety purposes, right? So even though everyone may respond differently, we want to be as safe as possible. So making sure that we prevent the low blood sugar and learn from our activity so that next time we can make a different decision, but we want to just have less lows during activity and be as safe as possible. So for those who watch The Office, um, I had to put this in here and you take a, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. And that is a quote by Wayne Gretzky, who in the show, The Office was then quoted by Michael Scott, which now, because I'm an Office fan, I have to quote to um, Kenny Rodenheiser. So this, as silly as that is, um, it makes a lot of sense because if you want to do something, but you're afraid to think back to that picture that we had of the ladders, maybe it's that you're trying to reach too high for your first step and we have to just take little steps along the way so if you're not going to make that first step and if you're not going to take that shot um, then you could be missing out on something that you really enjoy and really love um, and then again one final plug that i'm going to put for team cwd um, is making sure that we're here for you and we support you so if there is anything that you would like to see us do or do differently let me know. Um, I've been doing this for about a year and a half, so it's still not very long. It's still very new for, for me and for us, and we want to make it be as helpful for you as possible. So if there's any thing that you need or that you want, let me know. Um, first, I guess, sign up so that we can have that stream of communication. Um, join our emailing list so that you can hear this announcement of the participate from home option coming up in January. Join our Facebook group too, so that you can post pictures of what you're doing and make yourself be known like, hey, I'm doing this. I'm proud of myself. See what I'm doing. Um, and then someone else can see that and be like, you know, I want to do that too. And that's that whole sense of community. Um, tag us on social media. If you're on social media, the hashtag team CWD, so we can see you in action. And then, like I said, let us know what we can do and share with us um, what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong so that we can always be improving. Um, and then when I did this in the other session, we were able to have the slide, uh, the results pop up, but I hope after hearing this, um, one and two are the most common, right? Like I'm ready to get into my fitness routine. I'm, I'm ready to continue my fitness plan or number four, if you need more information, you know, that's always great to talk to your doctor for those threes out there. I was once a three, two, um, if you're not ready and you don't want to take that step, um, just keep thinking about it. Try to find that small attainable goal for you to, to get into it because, you know, it, it's going to be beneficial for you. And if you're thinking about it, then part of you wants to do it. And I, I don't want you to get in the way of yourself. Um, now go get it. So this was this past, what was it? August. Um, my wife, daughter, and I, we went to Disney and I had to stock out the team CWD cheer section. So we were right in front of jelly rolls on the left-hand side last time we were there and it was awesome. So um, hopefully my daughter is able to join us in cheering this year. Um, maybe I'll even run with her, who knows? But um, for those who are going in person, I, I look forward to seeing you there. For those who are not going in person, I look forward to talking to you about that participate from home option. Um, track your body, track your pro progress. And then tag me and Team CW and CW Diabetes um, on Instagram along the way. And I think thanks, Kitty. Yeah, thank you. So, question for you. So, if I wanted to start getting into running, because um, I know that you love running, what are you know? I, I know I need shoes. I need you know probably need some music so I can you know. Don't have to listen to the outside, but um, if, if you, if somebody's like, I'm going to start running this week, what do they need to get started? Okay. Wow. Great question. So first and foremost, the gear. So we want to make sure we're not running in like jeans and a dress shirt because you're not going to be comfortable when you're running and you're just going to be limited into how much you can actually move. Um, so making sure that we have the gear and I would stress shoes as being the most important because we want to protect our feet so that we can not damage our feet and injure ourselves before we even get started. Um, but then I would suggest having the right clothes for the weather that you're in. So if it's cold where you are, 
um, making sure that you aren't going out there and freezing. So having the appropriate clothing and then not talked about too much, but there are running socks out there and sometimes they can get pricey. Um, but those make a difference when I'm running without running socks, I get so many blisters. It's crazy. So I always make sure that I have a good pair of running socks as well. Um, sometimes depending on the person, I might not recommend putting those headphones in right away as boring as it can sound from the outside, just for safety too. Um, so if you're somewhere where it's dangerous, you're running in the city, you don't want to be running with two headphones, honestly, maybe one is okay, but uh, um, just because I don't want you to get hit by a car or something. So making sure that what you're using is being safe. Now, if you're thinking about diabetes, we want to also think about what we're packing with us to prevent lows throughout that run. Um, and always having something on board to make sure that we can prevent the lows. So some things that I like to carry for me personally um, I have like a pump holster that I put on my side so that my pockets are free. And then I have something called a flip belt. So I'm able to put, um, my phone in there in case I need my phone. I'm able to put some fast acting carbohydrates in case I were to go low. I put a little bit of slow acting carbs, depending on my run. So if I'm going for a longer run, that's just how I'm going to refuel my body as a human, not for diabetes purposes. Um, and then I like to put my glucagon in there too, because God forbid something happens. I like to have that to make sure that I'm being safe. Um, I didn't always do that, but that's something that I've been doing more recently because um, I, you just, you never know. Um, and especially if you're new to the activity, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Awesome. Uh, thank you. So um, we're gonna give the opportunity for anybody else to pop in with any other questions besides the one we have, which is if you wanted to, you talked about men, meeting people to start exercising and joining through CWD, but do you have any recommendations for ways of finding people who are into a certain activity or do you like a running group or um, an app to maybe, so you mentioned the 5K app, do you, what recommendations do you have for people to, you know, whether it's build community through running, meet other people, or if they need a little more assistance than, so, you know. So my first plug, I would have to do Team CWD, right? I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't say Team CWD. Um, but just like joining our Facebook group and joining us for that virtual presence, because we won't always be in the same community, but then finding out in your local community what is available nearby. So I have Facebook groups for running in my area code. I have Facebook groups for um, triathlons in my area code. Like there's all these different local groups. And then if you go to a running store, a lot of times there's flyers there about doing group fun runs or fun walks or something um, at specific days of the week at these times. And you can go when you can, you don't have to. Um, when I worked in Philly, there was a bunch of Philly running groups that would meet every Tuesday and there were some that would meet every Thursday and they would just go. And when you go, there's different paces and you don't have to worry about like, oh, I can't keep up because I'm not good enough yet. Um, and if you go and talk, everybody who's ever been in an activity before was once a beginner. So if you're ever worried about not being good enough, not being fast enough, not being ready to go for a group activity, I would advise you at least to go to the store and say, hey, I'm new to this. I, I would like some help um, and maybe a partner. Maybe they know a certified running coach that can help you. Maybe they know somebody who's really good with beginners and is like there to run with you. Um, or maybe they just know somebody who is just within your pace or your, your level. Because even if you've been doing an activity for a year, it doesn't mean you're sprinting through life. I'm not the fastest pace in the world, but I, I do my, my medals for completion. They're not for placing. Awesome. Well, I don't see any other questions. Any last minute questions before we go from the audience? Now's your chance. Um, if not, I want to say thank you so much, Kenny, for uh, joining me tonight and sharing this information. I know it's really helpful as we all um, think about getting out and getting some more exercise especially now that it's getting dark early. I think we all need to be a little bit mindful of making sure that we are getting out and doing something, whether it's inside or outside. I know that when it gets cold and dark, I, I struggle to leave the couch or the comfiness of the inside. Um, so it's I really easy. Seven it. minutes, it man, like seven minutes. That's all you need. Seven minutes. I can do that. I can do that. So <laughs> thank you. And everyone, thanks for joining us tonight. If you have any questions for 
Kenny, please feel free to reach out. You can get connected to him through the TT. CWD um, website on the CWD website. Also, if you want to learn more about all of our upcoming programs, so whether it's Team CWD, more screen side chats, our Masterpiece Product Theaters, or our Friends for Life conferences, you can learn more by visiting cwd.is slash community and checking out our website. So thanks again for joining us tonight. Everybody have a great night and a great week. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye, Kenny. Bye, Matt.